Welcome one and all to another edition of the DFO Show with Luby here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. The Miami Dolphins had a very fun weekend. The Canes not so much. If you find yourself in the middle with what could be an issue when it comes to leaks, no worries. Water Cleanup of Florida will alleviate any concerns. Just give them a call, 954-579-0356 for immediate assistance. Michael Robert and their team is prepared and all types of leak detection issues 24 hours a day, 365 days per year, and with over 60 years of combined experience, they're who you want to go to with any issues with your leaks. They'll clean it, they'll dry it, they'll fully restore it. Plus, with fully licensed, insured, and certified contractors, they will make it look brand new, so it will be like it never happened. They service Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Give them a call on Michael's personal cell phone, 954-579-0356. Again, 954-579-0356. Visit our website at wcufl.com. Check them out on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. At Water Cleanup FL. Plus, you don't want to take my word for it? That's cool. I'm not offended. Google will lead you the right way with over 75 star reviews. Water Cleanup of Florida, they made my life easier when we had water issues at my home. They'll do the same for you. Water Cleanup of Florida, if you have schmutz, they have the guts. Again, it was an interesting time this weekend in South Florida sports. We focused on the Miami Dolphins' success 3-0. and They beat widely considered the best team in football, the Buffalo Bills. We talked about it on our segment with John Jimmy Pigskin Playbook. We do that each and every Monday. We bring him to you here talking all things Miami Dolphins on the Devo Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. John Kajemi joining us here for uh, John Kajemi's Pigskin Playbook. Or, now, are you okay with that? Did we ever establish that? There you go. Whatever you hit, it sounded like it did uh, something. How's that, guys? Can you hear me now? A little better. A little better. A little better. Not great, better, but a little better. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm working on it. All right. Uh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling terrific. Uh, there you go. There you go. Now you're working. It, uh, Yesterday was, was something that uh, Dolphin fans really needed, I, I think, in South Florida really needed. A, a find a victory against the, one of the best teams, arguably the best team in the National Football League, and that's the Buffalo Bills. And they were, they were very opportunistic in, in ways that, uh, you know, they didn't outplay the Buffalo Bills, but they made enough plays at critical times to win the game. And, and that's all you have to do. It doesn't have to be pretty. You know, they always say in golf, there are no pitchers on the scorecard. Well, there weren't many pretty pitchers, but there were enough uh, good pitchers to overcome a really good football team, and they did what they needed to do to win. Well, and, and John, you you touched on it there, and Brett also sort of brought it up, where last weekend, yes, the Bills were the better team, but scoring like that versus the Ravens was really cool to see, but they were clicking, right? It's interesting. The really good teams find a way to win even when they're not clicking, and that's been this franchise's problem is, yeah, when everything's going well, Brian Flores can get a win, and even Philbin can get a win, and Gates got to the playoffs. It's when they're struggling, when you're playing a tough team where you're not just throw, chucking it all over the field, can you manufacture a victory? And even yesterday, <laughs> that last minute 45, when they, I couldn't breathe for, for 15 minutes, they won the game. <laughs> like, they won, the, they were yeah. hitting, even at the end, Dorsey can be as mad as he wants. That play took 30 seconds. So for them to think that they were going to get enough time, once they started having Josh Allen run around, and then you got it to the guy, and you have no timeouts, the Dolphins did their job. And that's what I took for I just smiled. I'm like, okay, look, McDaniel, I didn't love your play calling at the end, but again, you probably had a quarterback who had a back issue. Um, they won that game for the best team of football, and both teams had injuries, and that's something we wouldn't have seen the last 10 years. I agree with that. And, you know, when you look back, you always hear coaches. And then if you can think back as teams that you were on, I, I always do this, really good teams that you were on, it, they always found different ways to win. Yep. Yeah, they were, probably, they were probably driven by one specific thing. Now, I think this team will be driven by, you know, Tua getting explosive plays out of Waddle and Hill. That's going to what it's going to come down to. As the season goes along and it's getting tougher to score and the weather gets colder and you're on the road, can they make plays? But yesterday they found a different recipe, uh, adding a, a couple of elements to what they did against New England and what they did against Baltimore. They still had explosive plays. Those two big plays to waddle down the stretch there in the third quarter 
to set him up and get him in the red zone. Those were explosive plays. They may not make those plays last year, the year before, because they don't have Hill streaking down the left sideline, keeping one safety to the one yep. side of the field yep. while they have Waddle wide in the other and then cut back to the post. Yep. So the elements that they brought with them were, were you know, the defense, the goal line stands, the, the relentless pressure in the pocket, you know, running down Josh Allen, as good as Josh Allen was, he still couldn't make enough plays. And as many plays as they ran on offense, they still didn't have enough to get, you know, enough points to win that football game. So different elements are going to make up a really good to great team. This team's on that road to doing that. You know, we're thrilled also, John, because we only need six and eight the rest of the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to hit the over. I know, the I know where your head was yesterday. This is one in the bank. No one, yeah. I can get this one in the bank. I can lose to Minnesota or that scrub team from Chicago. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we, we stole a couple here uh, so yeah, far that uh, looked improbable. Uh, now, now, the Bills came in a little bit vulnerable, and if ever there was a spot, for the Miami Dolphins, though, we talked about this from a degenerate standpoint, uh, the teams coming out of a Monday night uh, football game uh, going on the road the ensuing week. Uh, I, I think they have probably, uh, you know, suffered the consequences uh, of uh, A, the short week, B, the travel, and, and uh, C, whatever exertion they had to uh, put into a Monday night, less time to uh, rest up for the next game. So, so they caught them, and they had uh, two safeties out, uh, I think four starters began a game out of commission there for the uh, Buffalo Bills. And, uh, you know, injuries always factor in, which is why I, I find it so uh, ridiculous that, that people will look at a schedule before the season and, and try to pinpoint games as a win or a loss. You, you just we, don't know what that team's going to look like. Yeah, We all do it, right? But, but didn't, I had this yeah. one as a big L oh, yeah, at the beginning yeah, of the yeah, season, yeah. right? I, I thought they'd make a game of it. I, I really did. I, I, I told the guy, uh, you know, take the points with the Dolphins, even though it went down to like four. I, I, I thought they'd be in this game. I, I really did. Well, I thought they'd be in this game once I saw the injury report. Yeah. 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 That okay. helped on a lot also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before that, I, I still think, and I still think today, Buffalo's probably the better football team. Look at the if stats. You go, if you go yeah. start to finish, Buffalo's yeah, yeah. the better football team. That doesn't matter. What really matters is, are you 3-0 and or are you 2-1? Yep. And, one? and yep. can, can that win get the Dolphins over the hump? Yep. Because every team's going to hit those you know, potholes. They're going to have some difficulties that you can't foresee right now. I mean, just look at what happened yesterday. Tua goes out for a series, and everybody's going, oh, my God, you really want Teddy? Come on, you're <laughs> nah, going to get exactly. a lot of Teddy. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Teddy, Teddy. So, so let's, you know, let's, let's hold on there a little bit. And he's because not terrible. He, no, yeah. he's not terrible, but they don't then. win the game. He right. They don't win that game if he plays the second half. There's going to be four sacks. There's going to be a couple tip passes. Yep. It, it just it wasn't written in the stars. I don't think the Dolphins win if he plays the second half. And that's not a knock on him. It's just tough coming into a game like that. And get that, that game was played at such a high level and such a high tempo that you're coming cold off the bench. It's going to take you more than a quarter to kind of get lathered up and say, okay, I, I, I kind of got the tempo and the pace of this game. Because even though Buffalo had injuries up front defensively, they were humming at Tua. Yep. You know, Tua, was, the ball was out. Yep. Ball, you know, they, Tua didn't light the place on fire, fire. He made enough plays in the passing game to find a win. Josh Allen was spectacular because he was under duress the entire day and yeah. he made people miss. Uh, he made throws that were on the run, like looked like uh, Bob Cousy, the jump pass. You know, he was like, he was just yeah. like throwing it out. You know, it was, it was unbelievable. So there, there were some plays in there that, that he made. I, I think that would have overcame some of the stuff had Tua not played in the second half, because I don't know if they'd have been as explosive as, it, you know, get those couple of plays to put him in scoring position. People naturally uh, were, you know, uh, trying to uh, ascribe style points and, and lack thereof to the uh, bombs that two were through to uh, Tyreek Hill uh, last week. Uh, one uh, Hill had to kind of wait for uh, as two guys were, were closing in on him, even though he was five yards behind him uh, originally. Uh, and the other, he sort of did a little stutter step, even though uh, he was running by himself. Uh, and, and so, you know, the usual detractors were there. Uh, this time, uh, when called upon to throw that, that key bomb to uh, Jalen Waddle uh, down the middle, I mean, that, that was a thing of beauty by uh, Tua. So uh, we're seeing him. I, it seems like he's completed more long passes than Ryan Tannehill did in, in the seven years that he was here. Yep. And, and, and 
you know, certainly with the frequency and, and the possibility that, you know, that is something a defense is going to have to watch for. I mean, that's being established, which can only help overall. But but it seems like he's already done more of it this year than he did all of last year with Brian Flores. He's been doing a really good job pushing the football down the field. And if you guys notice, it's more in rhythm. Like yeah. He's in shotgun. Yeah. He's getting back. He's kind of looking off a safety, looking off a defender, and then he's letting it, he's cutting it loose. And that's, and he's always in rhythm when he's doing that. He never has to elude pressure, kind of regroup and then throw the football. Because if he does that, those guys are going to outrun him. They're going to outrun most arms in the National Football League. That's how fast Jalen Waddle is, and especially Tyreek Hill, you know, if he's just humming down the field. I love when Tyreek's running down the field and he just gives you the hand like, hey, I'm, I'm 15 yards down the field. Yeah. Just throw it, I love it. you know, because I've already got these guys beat. So that's something you work on in the off season. You work on in training camp. And I think, you know, the, when it's tough to, it's tough to get that setting live unless you do it live. And he, he's done it now a couple times and it's gotten better and better and better every deep ball that he's thrown. So yeah, Tua, Tua has definitely stepped on the accelerator from where he was at this point last year to where he is now. You no, know, it's funny, too, because uh, this is kind of a, an immeasurable that, that you can appreciate having played the quarterback position, a uh, high level of college ball and in the uh, pros. But, uh, you know, sometimes it, it's the pass that, that the guy doesn't see. I'm watching the uh, 49ers game last night uh, against the Denver Broncos. And uh, Garoppolo, who just got the starting nod and played uh, substantially last week uh, after uh, the uh, uh, quarterback went down and, and – uh, he he has uh, Debo Samuel wide open, but but doesn't see him. Mm-hmm. The guy's got his hand in the air. He's almost uh, doing one of those things like they used to do in the Spurrier Florida offense when uh, five yeah. guys were yelling, here, here, <laughs> like they were in the sandlot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he ended up uh, throwing an incompletion on a third down play where, where he would have had a touchdown there that would have decided the ball game. And, uh, you know, that, that doesn't show up in the box score, you know, but uh, it's something to watch for. And it, it does seem like, Tua was, uh, you know, a decent decision maker in the past. I mean, he has a winning record, but uh, he, he's starting to gain a little bit more of a sharper acumen for uh, where to go with the ball and uh, seems ready to go. I mean, that was maybe the prettiest pass I've seen him make, that one to Jalen Waddle that split the two defenders and uh, caught him in stride right down the middle of the field. And, that, and that's complimentary, too, because Tua doesn't get that much of a cushion to lay the football in if Waddle doesn't widen the safety, like he's going to go to the corner first before he breaks it back to the middle of the field. So it's all timing, Depot. You know, as as Waddle's widening the one safety to the right, two is looking off the other safety in, in Tyreek Hill's direction. So it happens in unison where two guys are going down the separate sides of the field. Hill's widening, Waddle's widening as the safeties go outside to the numbers, and it gives two of that much more room to put air under the football and anticipate that deep ball knowing he's going to be able to get there before the safeties react and converge to the middle. So, you know, everybody sees the end result. Tua made a great throw, but they don't see the receivers and the scheme that's put into that play and and the timing of the play, when to release the ball, when Waddle breaks back to the post. Everything has to have a rhythm to it in offense for it to be that clean. That, That play was run to perfection. Well, and, and uh, you know, as Brett Tester pointed out, uh, week one, uh, regardless uh, of what personnel he has, uh, you had uh, Mike McDaniel in his first game uh, out dueling uh, Bill Belichick yeah. uh, from a coaching standpoint, maybe with better personnel. Uh, then going on the road and beating John Harbaugh, who appeared to have the game uh, completely in the bag before blowing uh, a lead uh, with, with some uh, exciting play calling and uh, obviously great execution there. And now you come back and beat the Buffalo Bills in, in a game where you outstat it. I mean, Mark Lawrence, when he's on our Degenerate Friday show, always talks about uh, one team out yarding the other as being a key factor in determining which way to go on a wager. I, he'll look back to the previous week and say, well, look, they gained 200 more yards than they, these guys did. Uh, it, statistically, that was uh, an abomination, that, that ball yep, game. Yep, yep, yep. 40 yep. minutes of uh, possession and uh, uh, twice as many yards, if not more, uh, you know, and, and uh, the box score. And you're looking, you'd have to think, wow, uh, this should have been like 37 to 13 in favor of felt like, yeah. I totally agree with you guys. I was writing the stats down before the postgame show, and I got to time of possession, and I went, oh, no, there's no way. 40 yeah. minutes. Yeah. They had the ball 40 and change. Back. 
I yeah. think they ran 90 offensive yes, plays. Yes, to 35 uh, to 39 Buffalo or Bills. something. They were 11 of 18 on third down. Yep. Yes. I mean, they stayed on the field, and yep. it was just they, – they had 32 first downs. <laughs> but when you look at the last two games, the Dolphins – had a couple of critical instances where they they, they were opportunistic. They, yep. they took advantage of the opportunity that was there. A couple goal line stands in yep. both games that, that they're able to take points away from the opposing yep. team. They were really good on fourth down again, you know, in the middle of the field. And, and they made some explosive plays that, you know, gathered up, you know, 40, 50 yards, 30, 32, 35 yards that got them into scoring position. You know, Buffalo seemed to nickel and dime, and, and they had some explosives, but it was one of those things where they, they were moving, you know, kind of like the dump truck, and the, and the uh, freight train was going in the, in the other direction. So Miami made enough plays to, to stay in it, but you're right, guys. You look down at this stat sheet, 400 and almost 500 horrifying. total yards, and the Dolphins <laughs> had 212. You know, that, that's a 48 to 14 game, and, hey, we'll regroup on a short week, right? Let's yeah. try to get the next one. But well, the and they also found uh, a way to win. Yeah, they cashed in that turnover when it looked like they were going to get handled out of the gate, as the previous two Buffalo opponents did. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Buffalo, uh, you know, would come out and smack them with a haymaker right away in round one, and, and the other teams never recovered, including hey guys, the Rams. I'm, I'm sitting next to Jeff Darlington in the in the box and again with Darlington. I mean, he, you, he's going to be my partner close. for the home yeah. game. So Darlington's to my right, and Mike Cunio from Channel Four is to my left. So I. I thought this was one of the turning points of the game. Uh, early, early in the game, B Buffalo goes down, scores, and easy, easy seven nothing. Easy. And you're gonna go, man, yeah. this is this is gonna be bad. Yeah. So they flip the field. Buffalo gets it, and they run on first and second down deep in their own end. And I go to Jeff. I said those were two wasted plays. Yep. Yep. What the Dolphins need to do now is they all they need is a strip sack right here, yeah. fumble. They're gonna turn the tide of this game early. What happens? Strip sack, fumble. Uh, Holland comes in off the edge. Ingram picks it up. Dolphins are first and 10. I think I don't even remember where it was. It had to be like, like on the, the seven yard, yard line, line or, something. Yeah. or something like that. Yeah. First and goal to six. So, you know, that those, those hidden yards in games like that, yep. where the Dolphins don't have to go 60 and take, you know, four, five, six minutes off the clock. And all of a sudden in seven, seven, Buffalo goes, they haven't done anything yet. Sure. Yeah. Or tied. And, and they did it twice. Yep. You know, the Dolphins did that twice in the game to make it 14-14, yep. you know, a couple, a quarter later. But it was one of those games where Buffalo fought so hard to get what they earned. Miami took advantage of some opportunities, and they were dead even with them. And, and that was, I think, the story of the game. Now, look, I'll preface what I'm going to say by this. Byron Jones hasn't played yet, and I their defense, I think, will be totally different when Kaku, whatever the hell his name is, can be a nickel slash Kohu, yeah. Third or yeah. fourth corner instead of a undrafted rookie who's starting pretty much with the the plays he's getting. So I I, I they have their own in, injuries and in the offensive line they've already had two or three guys, if not four guys banged up. But what we've seen this with this and they do it every game now the bend but don't break defense and we've seen teams win with it. But I'm always wondering when will the other shoe drop? How sustainable it is to let teams march up and down the field and then stiffen in the red zone. We know Bill Belichick's done it his entire career. So I ask you, as a guy who knows a lot more about the game than I do, it seems like that's what they're doing, where they're willing to give you a little bit, but you're not going to break their back, and it's worked for them through three games. I ask you, how sustainable do you think that is? So far, pretty good. I, I don't know as we look forward, but what I do know is that in the middle of this season, Luby, the quarterbacks that the Dolphins are going to be facing are not, as good. are not what they've just <laughs> faced in the yeah. first three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Okay? They're... they're the team quality of what they've faced in the first three weeks is not there on the schedule from week five to week, probably 11. Yeah. You know, there's a good stretch in there. So how sustainable, I think it might, it might be because teams may not get down there yeah, yeah, yeah. as often, you know, and, and this team's only going to get, get gain more confidence, yeah. especially on defense. You get Byron back on the edge. That's less time in coverage. You know, you, you can, probably send some, some heat a little bit more. You know, they, they haven't, they've blitzed, but they have, they've really been picking and choosing when they want to blitz quarterbacks. So now you don't have guys like Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson. They don't have as many mobile guys on that list when you go down the middle of the season. 
So you're going to be able to come after guys more with a little bit tighter coverage, yeah. less time in the pocket, less time to cover. Sometimes that's a recipe for gaining opportunities for turnover. So it might be more sustainable than you think as you look at the quality and caliber of talent the Dolphins are going to face. Well, it was nice, too, to see that you could trade blows uh, with the Buffalo Bills, uh, and they did come out on top. Uh, I, I was thinking, too, and John and Jimmy uh, with us uh, with the Pigskin Playbook uh, slash Dateline Dolphins, and, uh, you know, always brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill and the Keys. Is there anybody that needs a trip down there oh my God. more than Ken Dorsey? And... <laughs> now, now, we know that Danny had a temper. I mean, uh, or, or, you know, maybe it was his fierce competitive nature. But, you know, when he was running down the field and cursing out like Duper and Clayton for going the wrong way on uh, what was supposed to be an out batter, and he threw the ball into the stands, uh, you know, and he would run. He was seeing red as he would run like 40 yards down mm-hmm. the field. Uh, you know, just to get in the guy's face. Uh, have you ever seen a tantrum quite like that? Uh, did you get to see the clips of the Ken Dorsey meltdown at the end of the game when, when Buffalo failed to get off a play uh, and couldn't spike the ball and, and at least get a field goal try? I did. I did. And I spoke to Ken Dorsey before the game, and I was talking to him. Isn't he a mild-mannered Kent? I mean, isn't he like, the, you know, just a, is, you know, a sweetheart of, of a the, kid? One of the best dudes, kind of flatliner, yeah. you know. And he He's a really good guy. Uh, I don't blame him for being that upset at the end of the game because that that's a game that gets under your skin as an offensive play caller, I would think, yeah. because you're dialing up all the right things. You miss an opportunity on fourth and goal. Uh, you've got a guy oh, wide God. open in the end zone. It's probably the worst ball Josh Allen threw. Yep. And now you get back in position and all you need is a, a field goal and you're trying to you know get in position to – to get enough yards and spike the football with enough time on the clock for your special teams. And you don't get it, you know, and you just felt like you felt like they were at least going to get the chance, whether bass makes the field goal or not. I felt like Buffalo was still going to get an opportunity (laughs) to kick it. (laughs) And when you don't, you kind of lose your, your cookies. Right. And and he lost it. That was great. That was great. That's okay. You got to get an outburst. How how much equipment did he destroy there? Broke a laptop, uh, broke a camera. (laughs) Yeah, that laptop. He was throwing food. I mean, he was throwing everything. (laughs) It was great. I thought that was awesome. I'm thinking back. I remember covering Ken Dorsey when he was a quarterback with the University of Miami. He probably had several interviews with him on the uh, various shows. You know, I was also thinking about an element of torture uh, in, in my lifetime, or at least it would be today. Because uh, I used to do, uh, and you can appreciate this, John, uh, back in the day, uh, you know, we had only the Dolphins and UM. Uh, I would do four hours after the game taking calls oh. of UM football. Oh, games. my God, four hours Good after? Luck. Four hours on <laughs> WIOD. <laughs> no, you know, and and uh, truthfully, they had like eight phone lines. They were lit the oh entire time, God. all of them, until like the final minutes maybe of the fourth hour, which, uh, you know, if, if the game ended at like, uh, you know, say uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, you're, you're still in the press box at the orange ball. And it's like so, sort of slime ball place, uh, you know, four hours after the game, it's getting dark and people are calling. I can't believe it, man. The coach did a good job. Can you, you imagine being on the you air after here this week, Devo? You should that's what I'm thinking. I was thinking this week after the, the poor game. schmuck. That would have been great. <laughs> no, they would have gone for hours. I was on the air, game. but I mean, you don't Ooh. have enough interest to sustain four hours of calls in the hurricanes that you, you would have been lucky even after that game, if you could have lasted an hour without having to go into, well, you know, I got the injury report here. I'm speculating <laughs> on a couple of these things. <laughs> can we go to a break? Lou, can we take a break? Oh, we already uh, used all the commercials. All right. We'll keep talking. Uh, no, that was horrible. We'll get into that, but uh, should we not send Ken Dorsey since you know him down to Jimmy Johnson's big chill, at least with, with like a gift Perfect card candidate. for 50 bucks or something. Perfect candidate for the big chill. He needs to blow off some steam. He needs to put his feet up, get a get a cold beer, have a beverage of your choice. Yeah. Sit outside by the tiki bar, just kind of cruise in there and and order off the menu because everything's off the charts, right? At Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill. Wow. Uh, I, I got a report from down there. They said it oh, was good. crazy this week because you know not only did the Bills Mafia come down and take over the Elbow Room in Fort Lauderdale, they were all over South Florida, yeah. so you had some creeping down. Uh, oh yeah, to the keys, and uh, they were highly disappointed after 60 minutes of football. So, uh, but they but they all had a great time, oh, yeah. which was which was They'll terrific. Drink. And uh, <laughs> they do I, spend brother, money, man. I mean, they when do. they cut it loose, they, they, they let it go. Yeah, they, they were do. all over the elbow room, I think. Uh, also, but, uh, yeah, 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 
And the Fort Lauderdale Beach. But, uh, yeah, Jimmy Johnson's Big Show would have been a good spot for him there because uh, some of those Bills fans, I, I don't know, they might be able to consume two Italian fisherman pizzas by themselves <laughs> and then be mistaken by the Wildlife Association for a beached whale. But, uh, Jesus. No, it's a, it's a great spot down there, and the sports bar was humming. And, and oh, what a great yeah. place to check out college football on a Saturday, too, with the live music in the background there and, you know, the sunset going down as uh, maybe your favorite team is taking the field. Uh, yeah, just, just a pleasure being down there at any given time. Always have a lot of fun and learn a thing or two when we talk with John Jemmy, Miami Dolphins starting 3-0. and A lot of us, including John, felt, hey, if the Dolphins go 2-2, two and two, that's a really strong start. Well, the 3-0. and And in very different fashion in every game. Very defensive, strong effort game one. Game two got down, but the defense and the offense came alive in the second half to overtake the... Team, a lot of people think will win the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens, and the Buffalo Bills coming in roaring. Yeah, they had a lot of injuries, but so did the Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins shocked us all, including me, who is a huge Dolphin fan. The Miami Dolphins, eh, the last two minutes got a little hairy, but the Dolphins prevailed 3-0 and atop the AFC East right now. Looking like they're a lot different than people thought. And Tua got his body rocked, whatever it was, uh, whether it was his bell rung or his back. He came out in the second half. Sat there, made a huge throw down the stretch in the fourth quarter, leading to a touchdown, taking the lead. The defense did its job, stopping the Bills a couple times, first on a goal line stand, then late as the clock ran out. The Dolphins winners, 21-19, sing the 3-0. Thank you to John and Jemmy. Thank you all for checking us out. You can also check us out each and every morning, 7 to 9 on South Florida Live, The Default Show with Luby, YouTube, Google, Facebook. Check it out everywhere. Also check us out on our national podcast, The Believe Network. B-L-E-A-V dot com. Search after hours. And our South Florida content most days right here. The Diva Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Hey, folks. Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously. Friendly atmosphere. Not too loud, but good energy. Reasonable prices. And a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, <laughs> no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched, steaks hand cut every day, everything, and I mean everything is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation, because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. 